Grace ankle, high ankle sprain? Or? You know, I don't know exactly which part of the ankle it is, but it's bad enough to where she's, it's still no weight bearing. But not a procedure requirement. Uh, no, that okay. part has been, that's been good news. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But this weekend, definitely. I think this weekend's a no go and we're praying for next week. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, with Tahina coming back and playing better, how much is that? You're hoping that that's not an anomaly, obviously. So how, how much do you have so. to be further encouraged that I, whatever she was dealing with that she's feeling? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tahin had a great, great game. It was awesome to see. You know, she's been really working hard at it. She's been leading. She's been doing the things that she's supposed to do and needs to do. And it was just good to see her have some, you know, some success. And hopefully that that confidence, uh, you know, will will continue. She's in a really good headspace right now. What metric or what performance aspect, Kelly, is most frustrating to you right now? Because in a lot of the advanced stats, I don't have to rattle them all off. You're aware of them. Uh, they are what they are. They're, 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 and, and, and unfortunately it's, it's for you, they're, they're us happening in. at the same time to where it just makes the situation all the more exacerbated. But our overall metrics are keeping us in this thing and, you know, to the very end of the season, which is a which is good thing. But I think for us, it's just we, it's a consistency. We, we've talked about it from, I think, probably November when we first all started to chat. And uh, it, it just came to game. We, we don't get that second or third player to have a great game the same night. So Tahina has an awesome game, and then we didn't have anybody else really from the perimeter step up. Uh, baskets have been come to, uh, hard to come by around the rim. Um, you know, the nights we defend really well or the nights we struggle offensively. The turnovers have, have, have been an issue. I look at just this Arizona, you know, after watching them, our game down there, tie score, two minutes and 20 seconds to go. UCLA, tie score, two minutes and 50 seconds to go. Uh, it was that way in a lot of our games. We're just not, uh, you know, in the end making the plays that we need to. Uh, one here, one there, defensive end, offensive end. And sometimes those plays that we're not making are in the second quarter and the third quarter. So it, it's been a little bit frustrating, but I, our kids today, uh, Chris was at the practice, one of our best practices we've had. You, you couldn't tell that we are on a losing streak night now. You would, you would have thought that we're one of the teams chasing a championship. Offensively, when it's harder to finish inside, that can explain the field goal percentage numbers, the offensive efficiency numbers, points per possession, et cetera. But defensively, whether it's steals percentage, assist to turnover rate against, rebounds, yeah. effective field goal percentage against, as that's gone on over the course of the season, as much as you want to address it, and I'm sure you have addressed it, it sooner or later it becomes who you are. How hard has that been to accept that this is what this team is doing uh, in terms of defensively? Well, you you know, 27 games into the year, we are who we are right now. And, and you know, we, we don't, uh, with a limited bench, we just don't have a ton of options. You know, we don't. I think it's been a, a lot of different things. I think size of our guards, um, you know, inexperience, uh, you know, at key positions. It's just, you know, we, we try to adjust. I, our kids work their tails off. They practice hard. They have good attitudes. We're trying like crazy. And as coaches, we're trying uh, as well. And we're trying to figure out what's going to work this game and that game and the next game and and looking at last game, what could we have done better? I mean, we, we haven't changed our approach to the game. And neither of our, our, our players, you know, it's just we're in one of those little um, spells right now that don't come along very often. And, uh, you know, we've just got to continue with hard work, keep grinding and try to get out of it. Do you have an update on Elise and if she'll be playing this weekend? Elise? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Actually, she had a great practice today. She's had a really good last couple of weeks in, in, in practice, and, and that's why, you know, she's earned a little bit more time on the court. Mm -hmm. And and hopefully, you know, this is her senior weekend. Hopefully this is one of those magical weekends for her. You've been candid about what you think it's going to require for postseason. Obviously that's still out there as a thing to aspire for. But short of that, is there any conversation about a willingness to ex to pursue the WNIT if it came to that, or 
will you not even pursue that? Because usually that's a young team thing. You don't have a young team. Well, but we have some young players who could benefit from that. Um, you know, I, uh, I've always, my approach has always been, if somebody wants us to play, we're going to play. Because if we're not playing, they're either in the gym working on their games or we're practicing or, you know, whatever. I just think if somebody wants you to play, I, I think you, you, uh, you play the games. So you, so if that, if it can, if push came to shove with that, if you got the sure. opportunity. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 No, I, I would stand by that. I, I liken it to my second year here. Uh, if you guys remember, some of you don't because you're way too young, but Creppy is an old fart. Um, I covered the last year of the guy that was here before you. Okay. Then you would remember this. We kind of limped home in the last week of the season. Jillian Aileen tore ACL. Jordan Loetta tore her ACL. That that group that year was kind of a I, I – it's one of my favorite teams I've ever coached. It was a hodgepodge group that we just kind of threw together. We had a couple of freshmen, Bando – or Bando wasn't a freshman, but Maite and Adi Gilden, they were freshmen, and we had a – couple of fifth year transfer, you know, in and Liz Brenner was on that team. And we were so down because of the injuries and we didn't get in the NCA that it was the consensus among my staff and among most of the team not to play. We had a team meeting, Jacinta Vandenberg and myself were the two that said, no, we're going to play. And we ended up winning four games in that, that tournament. And I thought it was a springboard to some some great things that we did, obviously, the next year. Even though it was a different team, Maite, Bando, Adi, some of the, Jacinta, some of those key players had some postseason experience. And more than that, we had a lifetime memory. We go down to UTEP. They hadn't lost at home. 20-0, it was 12,000 fans. We were down 19 points. And we came back and won that dang game. And then we went up and got ambushed at South Dakota to end the season. But... <laughs> But it, it was a great memory, you know, and so, yeah, to, to, I guess to make a point of all of it, if, if somebody wants to play, we're going to play. Gotcha. With this being the last home weekend, uh, obviously the seniors being recognized, you mentioned that and he's probably going to be one of them. So, yeah. but you've not had a player be recognized who then chose to come back. So fans will start to read into decisions. Has a decision been made about next season for her? Uh, no, not as far as I know. Um, and that's her decision. I'm going to I'm gonna uh, support her whichever way she wants to go. If she wants to come back for a fifth year, great. Uh, if she decides she wants to, you know, because she will graduate this spring, she wants to play somewhere else for another year, I'm going to support her with that. If she decides she wants to enter the draft, she is on the draft board. I've talked to three different GMs. I mean, she is going to be in the mix. Um where in the draft, I don't know, but uh, I'll support her for, with that. So that, that that's my job. The other uh, three seniors, Taya Hansen, you know, has, has had a great Pac-12 career. Really proud of her, Elise and uh, and Taylor uh, have been a big part of, of what we've done here, and 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 we're proud of them. They're gonna they're gonna go out with Oklahoma, or Oklahoma, uh, Oregon degrees, and uh, and I think that's really special. I I, I personally really like this group. Of four seniors, they're they're good kids. They've been great ambassadors for our university and, and basketball program. So I wish them all the best. You know, uh, one, two, three, three fifth years. You don't see that very often. You know, that's COVID deal now. Uh, and then uh, and then India. So I, I wish them all the best, and and we'll remember them forever. For Arizona specifically, but one one more time seeing Reese and Pellington. What? what will have to change and what will have to be different in terms of limiting them and their uh, ability to you know, be a threat against you. Yeah. Well, I think anytime you play Arizona, two things, you know, jump out. Number one, you got to take care of the ball. So live ball turnovers. And we, you know, we actually played a pretty good game statistically at Arizona the first time the turnovers killed us. Okay. So we've, we've got to, to make sure that we take care of the basketball. And then number two, they're really good on the boards and, uh, and then in transition. So those, I guess that's three areas. We've, we've got to do a good job in those three areas. And if we do, then we can absolutely beat these guys. This has been, I'm sure, challenging for you in a different way. Sure. How, I'll bring it back to the very beginning. Before the season started, you gave everybody the notebooks for to be 
the, the notebooks to put down what they were sure. thankful for and chronicle things. I yeah. have no idea if everybody's yeah. done that every yeah, step. And I don't, but, and I but, don't really but, follow yeah. up on it. Yeah. But on the overarching point you were trying to get there throughout the course of a year, what would you say over the last month, if you were putting anything in, whether you did or didn't, metaphorically speaking, some of the things you either learned or some of the things you were appreciative of yeah. amidst what is a really challenging time? What is, for in your tenure here, the most challenging time? Yeah. Well, what I am most proud of of this team, I, I know we're on a, on a losing streak. You couldn't tell by just being around them. I, I think their chemistry off the court's been great. I think they're having fun. They're probably having more fun in the locker room and stuff before the game. They're energized. I, they're doing the right things. They, we have the right tenor. It's not translating, unfortunately, on the court in wins. Um, so I'm proud of them for that. They no, Nobody's thrown in the towel. My staff, they're still grinding. They're still doing the, um, you know, uh, the, their due diligence, and, and we're working on the next opponent. I think they've compartmentalized that pretty well. What's next? We've only talked about Thursday. I About a month ago or three weeks ago, I kind of gave them the big picture. This is what I think we need to do. And I'm not sure that helped. So we've now taken an approach of we can only worry about Thursday night's game. And I think if we can get Thursday night's game, I'm going to feel a lot better about Sunday. We'll feel a lot better about going into the Pac-12 tournament. I think we're going to end up being one of those teams. If we can get into the field, and there's still a chance for us to get into the field, we're going to be one of those teams nobody's going to want to play. We're going to be a high seed, low seed. I don't know. High number. High number. A high numbered seed that – Somebody, if we're in their bracket, they're going to go, dang, I, I, you know, we, we drew the short straw. So, um, and we've been there before, you know, uh, as, as a coach, I think, you know, you're, you're the, the guy that looks at records. You know, I think I've won eight or nine, ten games as a double-digit seed in the NCAA tournament. That doesn't happen very often. Maybe it's never happened. So, we can, if we can just get in there, I think we have the experience to, you know, um, to be able to get our kids to, to, to believe that, hey, we can do – do some damage. Um, some other things that I wish I would have done differently. I, you know, without thinking about it, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think I've done the best job that I can do, you know, during this, uh, we've stayed positive and, you know, and, and, and we're, I think our kids believe that we believe in them. So that, that's all I can do as coach. With eight players available, uh, you know, how much do you have to kind of hope, on Thursday, because, you know, Arizona State is the one most likely to say, you know, seven players isn't enough to play. Um, so, you know, I mean, how much do you have to really keep your fingers crossed? You know, because I mean, one more theoretically, you know, you may not be able to play. I'm playing. You know? If we have five in uniform that can suit up, we are going to play. You know me well enough now to know that you know that is the case. That, that is the case. If we have five, we will play. I, I'm a play guy. Uh, let's just do it. I mean – Come what may. So, why do you think the big picture perspective didn't really translate into um, your team taking it compared to the single game one at a time? I, I, I don't know. You know, as coaches, you try to. to re this is new territory for me. Mm -hmm. You know, just personally. So I'm. You know, it, it's really funny. The years we have huge success, great tournament runs. A lot of people, you know, text you, but I'm getting more texts now from former players and coaches and others, you know, friends, colleagues, coach, keep your head up. You're doing the right thing. Coach, you know, got your back. These kind of seasons happen on and on. I'm actually having more people reach out now, which makes me actually feel really good. Okay. That, 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 you know, people are, you know, they, they, they don't want you to, to be in this kind of position, but it happens as a coach. It happens to everybody. Unless your name is Gino or Amy. How much does right? that translate over to the girls now? You have people like Sabrina involved and you have former players that are kind of encouraging you guys a little bit. How much does that translate over to the culture that they have and keeping their, their head up? Satu, just, just texting me. Miss you. Love you. <laughs> just literally during practice, I haven't had a chance to respond to her. You know, so it, you know, Marche Moore. Just same thing. She just takes, you know, I haven't talked to, to Marche in a year, you know, and uh, and she reached out today. So it's like I, I that makes me feel good. And, uh, you know, 
and and I know there are better days ahead of us. It's just it's kind of one of those one offs, you know that that. Uh, and we and as a coach, if I had the to go back to your question, I I don't have obviously I haven't pulled the right string. So we tried that. Now we're trying next game only. You know this is what instead of looking big picture, let's look more what's next. This is all that matters. So is understanding part of those limitations of this team physically, Kelly? Part of why, like you talk about pulling certain levers, pushing certain buttons, every coach goes through that. Yeah, sure. Some are more willing, and you've been willing at times, but it was usually when Sap was here, to be more pointed and directed and personal in these settings because sometimes players respond constructively to that. Is part of those limitations why you haven't with this group because... Haven't what? Necessarily, if a player doesn't perform to say Jane Doe specifically, specifically, because of certain limitations that maybe that button isn't worth pressing because. Yeah, we'll just say because. Uh It's just a different era, different era. So I listen, I I have no problem with with our player. I'm actually really proud of him. I really like this group I have from the beginning. I have from the beginning. We've talked about that. I just think this is a, uh, you know, it's just not translating uh, into W's on the court, but it's not for lack of trying. It's not for, you know, we have bad kids, bad chemistry. It's none of that. We're just, it just hasn't worked on the court yet. And I say yet because there's still some, um, there's still some hope. And all we can do is what we can do on Thursday night, just play our best and hope to, to scratch out a win somehow. You talk about this team's chemistry kind of off the court, just not being able to translate on the court. Do you think partially kind of the reason why is because you have been so inconsistent with the leadership on your team, just knowing that sometimes one player is going to have a great night, but the next night she might not? Well, that's been our issue all, all year. I mean, you know, I, I'm not sure, you know, our, our, those two uh, experienced guards like India and Tahina, I'm not sure they both had great games very often at the same time. When one has a really nice game, the other maybe has a little off, off game. So, um, but the leadership's you know been fine. I, again, this has been a really good. This is a good group, and uh, I just I, and I it hurts me because I I want them I want them to have success. You know I I, I feel for what they're going through, and uh, you know. And hopefully that starts on Thursday. That's all we can can hope for. Do you feel like Tahina and India could get to a point still in this season where they're both playing kind of at their potential? Do you feel like that's kind of your missing so. piece? I mean, I hope so. We don't have many games left. So, yeah, that's obviously the ideal. I still think this is a really good team. If we can get it all clicking at the same time, I think we've got the uh, the, the parts. You know, we, we do.